Amen. Thank you, choir. This is one of the anthems that our choir sings this time of year that when I hear it, I really do feel like it's Christmas. Thank you so much for that. I'm wondering about you. What song, what carol, when you hear it, really lets you know it's Christmas? When you hear it sung, when you sing it yourself, when you hear it on the radio, what makes you say, okay, it's Christmas now? What do you think? Joy to the world. O little town of Bethlehem. Hark the herald. Silent night. What's that? Feliz Navidad. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, there are there are a lot. And Dana is going to sing one in a little later in our service. That's another one of my very favorite of all times that uh, gets me in the spirit, too. Um, there is no other holiday that sings like Christmas. And that's what the scripture tells us and lifts up, lifts up our song this morning. Let us move into the song with a word of prayer. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the songs of all of our hearts gathered in this place this day be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, I was really surprised to hear after Thanksgiving on one of my sports radio shows, I can't figure out why this came up in a sports radio conversation, but the commentator said this, that as soon as Thanksgiving ended, something like over 150 radio stations around the country went all Christmas music all the time. And maybe you listen to some of those stations in your cars on the way to church or wherever you're going. The fact that music is a soundtrack to our December days should not be a surprise to anyone because, after all, Christmas was born amidst music. Both Mary and then later her cousin-in-law, Zachariah, responded to God's blessing upon them by singing praises. And of course, a little later on in the story, you know, there's that, there's that event um, when there's these angels in the sky, you know, and they, and they start singing Gloria in excelsis Deo, glory to God in the highest. This morning, we read the lyrics and heard read the lyrics from the first Christmas carol ever. It's Mary's song, which burst forth from her on the occasion of her visit with her cousin Elizabeth. And let, may I say that I appreciated Elizabeth being the one to assist me with the candle lighting today. Very appropriate for the scripture of the day. Um, her cousin Elizabeth, though, was with child. In the verses immediately preceding this morning's scripture reading, Luke tells us this, that when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby that was in Elizabeth's womb leapt with joy. And Elizabeth said in a loud voice, being filled with the Holy Spirit, she said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed is she who has believed what the Lord has told her and that it will be accomplished. That's when Elizabeth got through saying those words. That's when Mary opened her mouth and began to sing. And as James K. said in a Christian Century article some years ago, Mary keeps singing, ranging high on her scales of praise, soaring in her expectant revolutionary libretto because God has reached so unexpectedly down to where the least and the lowly live. In Mary's song, we hear about a young woman whose life was turned upside down. 
She was no longer the young adult, the teenager, as some have guessed, like other teenagers of her day with her life on this trajectory of others, like others in her generation. Instead, she realizes that what the angel Gabriel has promised, had promised to her just several days before, that her life would be changed forever. My soul magnifies the Lord, she says. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For my creator has regarded the lowly estate of this handmaiden. The song captures the moment. Sometimes it takes a while to sink in when major things happen to us. And, and the angel had had told her all this was going to happen, but this was the moment when it really sank in for Mary, what she had allowed the Holy Spirit to do, what this meant for a life that would never be the same and indeed would never be truly her own any longer. The Reverend John Hamish reflected, this is a revolutionary moment when you come to think about it. A humble woman singing to the Lord. With news like this, one would expect a kind of song that was high and mighty, grand, uh, splendiferous. Maybe with the Mormon Tabernacle Choir, accompanied by the New York Philharmonic, led in word by the Archbishop of Canterbury. It's that kind of an event. You would expect an anthem to be accompanied by thunder and lightning, cymbal crashes and rolling drums, a cloud of smoke and a pillar of fire, or at least a burning bush. But instead, you hear the simple solo of a girl who says she is of lowly estate. The Greek word for lowly that Luke reported having been used by Mary doesn't simply mean humble. Literally, it means poor, as in poverty poor. Princeton's Dr. James K. reminds us that Mary was poor. She was dirt poor. She was poor and she was pregnant and unmarried. She was a mess. But still she sings. Why, he asks? Because this lowly one, this wretched one, this woman is lifted up by God. Mary, despised and rejected by most of society, is favored by God to be the vessel to bring the divine one into our world. That's what causes Mary to lift up her voice and sing. Sing, Mary, sing. How we all need to hear your song today. We need to listen for the song of Mary, the song of good news for the poor and the suffering, the song that brings hope in the midst of despair. Sing, Mary, sing your song, because heaven knows we need to hear it. We need to join our voices in harmony with hers. Because I bet in this room right now, and definitely out on the streets, parked in traffic, it could be some of our lives are in a big mess. Talk about poor Maybe some of us know that at the time you need money the most to make Christmas really special for people in your life, your children, your spouse, your extended family and friends, you may be going to your sofa and looking under sofa cushions or getting out a purse and making sure no coins had dropped to the bottom or maybe, guys, going to your summer pants and checking in pockets to see if there was a dollar you slipped in there just so you could buy a little something for someone special. Or maybe some of us are here today who are poor in spirit and broken in heart. I know that over 12 members of our church family are experiencing their first Christmas without a beloved 
spouse, parent, grandparent. Most recently, our faithful Christian sister, Wilda Brewer. Some of us may be experiencing, because of our grief or because of other things, a poverty of light. Maybe we just feel we are walking in dark days, looking for some kind of star to lead us to a place of peace. Whatever it is that has brought us to a lowly estate, harsh words from relationships, burdens of caregiving, parents and children alike, or just the seasonal malaise, because Christmas can be a depressing time for some people, we need to learn from Mary how to find our voice again, how to lift up songs of praises, even when we are in a lowly estate. And Mary's song not only lifts up us individually, but also lifts up entire nations. We're reminded in the scripture today, she said this, God has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. God has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent away those who hoard wealth to themselves. He sent them away empty. Now this past week, our nation was reminded of what humble leadership looks like as we celebrated the life of George Herbert Walker Bush. I realized not everybody in this room voted for him. But I also realized, as the words to the Episcopal liturgy were shared publicly twice in both services, that George Bush was a sinner, just like I am and just like you are. But he claimed his sin redeemed through the grace of Jesus Christ. And in his life, and it is only through his death that we can see in his life, the clarity of his faith commitment that shines because of his leadership in our nation. In this Christmas season, it was important for me to hear last week and be reminded of 41's words for a kinder, gentler nation in which a thousand points of light were only the beginning of a starburst that would lead us to peace on earth. A young Mary believed such a thing could happen, would happen with the birth of her child. She believed with certainty that God has the power to turn the world upside down and she sang it out loud and strong. Mary's song is a song of liberation for us, putting the right, putting to right the wrongs of the world. And if if there's nothing else about this song that can help us um, lift up our own voices, it's being able to see the possibilities that may indeed come true. We know that many of God's children right now, in this moment, need to have their lives turned upside down or right side up. Those children who are in war zones, Afghanistan, Syria, those children who are still living behind fences in centers around our country who were stripped away from their parents, still there. And children in our own school district, friends, who are undereducated but hungry for learning. These are the places we need right sized up. We need Mary's song to be sung. We need a Christmas carol that becomes our theme song, not just for this time of year, but every day of the year. John Francis Wade was a Roman Catholic layman who was hounded out of England in 1745 because of his faith. It was during the Jacobite Rebellion, and it was when um, uh, the Protestant rulers of England um, were either misguided or 
or false prophets of the faith and went about trying to um, do away with Roman Catholicism altogether. John Francis Wade had to leave his home had to leave and went to France and to uh, and went to France and others went to Portugal at the time and he was now a refugee and he wondered how can a refugee in a strange country away from home start over again how could one support himself now in those days um, and Keith, you probably know all about this. The printing of musical scores was very cumbersome, and and copying them by hand was a real art. And so he went and got a job at the Roman Catholic College and Ministry Center in Douai, France, where he was given the job of copying musical scores. And he found he had a real talent for that he didn't realize he had artistic penmanship but not only that he also found that he was fascinated with music composition and so he began to try his hand at writing his own musical pieces he was known as a copyist primarily scores of music that were later given to choirs and to orchestras however one song was um, it, that he was known for in particular begins with the latin phrase adeste fidelis lete triumphantes now at one time historians believed he had simply discovered an ancient hymn by an unknown author and copied it himself. But scholars now believe that Wade wrote the piece. It was an original piece written by him. And perhaps you already know the Christmas carol to which I refer from the Latin verse. In English it goes, O come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. O come ye, O come ye to Bethlehem. But now, perhaps we can understand verse 2 of that hymn just a little better. When Wade wrote, sing choirs of angels, sing an exultation, sing all ye citizens of heaven above. For a lowly exile who couldn't go home to his own country where he gave up his citizenship. How wonderful it was for him, how hopeful it was for him to lift up a song that in God's realm, we are all citizens together, united equally in the eyes of God. Mary's song becomes our song in which we proclaim a kinder, gentler world with a prince of peace as the one who rules us all. So, friends, sing that song. And may we sing it not just for a season, but for all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. We come to this time where we have lifted up our songs and now we come to lift up our lives to our God. If there is anyone who is here today who is looking for a place to sing in harmony with your brothers and sisters and to share good news, not only in song, but just in how you live your lives. If you're looking for a church home, I invite you to come forward during the singing of our invitation to Christian life, which we will stand and sing together. Lift up your heads, O mighty gates. Let us stand as we sing. <laughs> 